We're talking today about uh, artificial intelligence and its way forward in the realm of MRI. So uh, all of us have been hearing uh, the name AI and must be wondering as to what this is and how it can impact our future. My presentation will be walking you through most of the things what we at Philips are in particularly focusing on uh, in the field of artificial intelligence. So uh, just to briefly explain as to what is artificial intelligence, it is intelligence that is demonstrated by machines in contrast to natural intelligence. So natural intelligence is that what human beings have and artificial intelligence is somewhat different from that, wherein we need to feed a particular algorithm information as to how it can replicate in the future. So uh, we need to give it surplus of data. We need to do a lot of background work. There's a lot of hard work going behind the curtains in order to make an AI algorithm work. So it is the overall super set of terminologies when it comes to automizing data. So that is how we say that AI is the mother terminology. And under this, we have different subcategories, which is machine learning, deep learning, and neural networks. So what is machine learning? Yes, all these three are a bit different from each other. And uh, there is yet another category of artificial intelligence, what we call as adaptive intelligence. So that is what we mostly make use of in all our missionaries these days. Like for example, uh, on an MRI equipment, what we use is more of adaptive intelligence. And what we use for a post-processing, probably for a diagnostic purposes, the exact artificial intelligence based on neural networking. So uh, what is machine learning? You give the computer uh, a certain set of data. You give the computer a restricted set of training data to put it in better words. And the computer works uh, in accordance with the data what has already been fed to the system. So it tries to match what you have already given it. So there's, there are variables which are being converted into computational uh, truths. Whereas deep learning is again a part of machine learning. So this is more, more recent technique. So uh, you know the repository of data is much more bigger in this case. So you're looking at huge amounts of data, like, for example, a patient with Alzheimer's uh, or a patient with multiple sclerosis. So you're looking at data in very subtle quantities. So you need a much more bigger uh, data set and also a much more robust algorithm to work for deep learning. Convolutional neural network is, again, another subcategory of AI, which tries to replicate exactly how the human brain works. So as all of you know, the human brain is made up of millions and billions of nerve cells called neurons. And uh, humans have tried to replicate the same mechanism into the computer realm by trying to introduce something what we call as neural networks. So one neuron branches to another and another and another. So that's basically how the human brain works, right? So the same thing has been implemented in the computer realm, wherein variables are a few but the assumptions and the results are many. And then the computer just takes it across the neural network and comes up with the best possible solution. So all these are automation. It saves us a lot of time and energy. It is not meant to entirely replace human beings. But in the near future, human beings should work in harmony with artificial intelligence. Now, again, just to quickly stride over what I just told you, it is a simulation of human intelligence. It is not the same as human intelligence. Human intelligence has a lot to do with cognitive thinking and cognitive adapt adaptability, whereas AI is something that needs to be trained like a baby in order to work. There is learning, reasoning, and self-correction that's involved, whereas human brain also tends to do mistakes, but that might be due to other cognitive factors, whereas AI is trained in such a way that it cannot make a mistake because it replicates exactly what you have put into it. This can also backfire, and that is why most of our radiologists, most of our doctors are still not satisfied. There's a lot of research going on, and it's been phenomenal. Applications of AI include expert systems, speech recognition, and mission vision. All of you have been working with AI, I'm pretty sure. Because all of you use your mobile phones, you use Google, 
you use Siri, you use Cortana, all of these are artificial intelligence chatbots or artificial intelligence representatives in some form or the other. So it's just that they make use of voice recognition here. So that is the kind of algorithm which forms the foundation of, uh, let's say, Siri or Cortana. And also now you have your Google devices at home, which can sing out to you and, you know, put out a number and you can dance to it. All this is basically little buds of AI. So AI can also perform a huge number of tasks simultaneously, unlike human beings. So human beings are very complex animals that have phenomenal cognitive abilities. However, there is a limit to the amount of work what we can do side by side, or we cannot multitask beyond a limit. So that is when AI comes over and says, hey, human, let me take over the reins, you take a rest. So that is basically the overview of AI. I do not want to explain further because Saisar has given you a beautiful uh, overview of that. Now, coming over to subsets of AI, okay? So just what I said was one example of chatbots, of music and entertainment and all of that. We have artificial intelligence in e-commerce. Hey, has anybody of you used Flipkart and wondered why does my previous search come back and haunt me again? I search for something embarrassing and it's up here again. How do I get rid of this? Well, relax, it's AI. They know what you've been checking and they give you suggestions, right? So it's all AI there. So be careful next time you want to browse or buy something, right? Okay. So now going over to human resource management, how many of you have been applying on LinkedIn without getting any answers to any of your job requests? Well, I did many of that too. So I am also one among you. Well, they've been using AI algorithms to see exactly what they need, okay? So next time you make your resume, try to make sure that you include things what they want and not what you want them to hear, okay? So that's another example. AI in healthcare, phenomenal. It's going beyond all boundaries in MRI, CT. You have all kinds of diagnostic features that are happening on the fly. And there's a lot of automation and diagnosis, especially after COVID. We do have softwares that can even pick up small wrong glass opacities, lung abnormalities, what human eyes could miss. So I'm talking about large breakthroughs in the field of healthcare. Intelligent cybersecurity, yes. So people are on the fly checking your internet. It's all based on the keywords what you search. Uh, people are using, uh, making good use of it in cybersecurity based on what people are searching and they know exactly what you are doing. And that's beyond the realm. I'm not going to discuss much. Artificial intelligence and logistics and supply chain and sports betting industry. The betting industry is making a hell lot of money out of AI. And people are also making good use of AI in the form that it works based on probability. And a human brain has a limit to which you can uh, make use of mathematics and probability. Whereas AI can really be sharp and quite uh, right about what it really gives you. Now going over to medicine. Clinicians and hospital administrators have been getting a huge amount of data and their heads are breaking. They don't know what to do with it. And the main key factor that's giving them all this headache is time. Where do I get time? I'm just two people. Should I have to hire more staff? How many people do I hire? How much money do I spend? So it all comes down to money and it comes down to time. And nobody has, uh, nobody is ready to waste either of these. So that is when AI comes in and says, give me, give me my opportunity. Let me show you what I can do. So here we at different companies have been trying different kinds of things to provide solutions to customers like you, technologists, radiographers, doctors. So AI can help turn this large data into very small subsets and send it to wherever it is supposed to go. So let's say you've done a scan. AI can send it to your scanner. AI can send it to your packs for diagnosis. AI can give you an automatic report. AI can tell you, hey, this was not the scan that was supposed to be done. You should have done this scan. AI can tell you, no, this is not the protocol you should take. You should take this protocol instead. So all these are automated by AI. AI-based solutions out of the box. So there is something called as IntelliSpace Discovery. Of course, uh, uh, this is with Philips. Uh, likewise, every company might be having its own solution. So this is an integrated AI solution wherein you can make your own algorithms, wherein your doctor might be saying, hey, what if 
the machine will automatically say, okay, so this patient has a clinical indication of an epilepsy. So uh, I should be doing a T1 IR, something like that. So even if there's a young radiographer there, this could probably help. Looking at the doctor, he might want to do a zillion other things. Or let's say he wants to do a cardiac analysis and just uh, get rid of the tedious time. You know, it takes at least an hour or two for him to make a cardiac report. So he can always make his, his own algorithm to uh, diagnose. So uh, artificial intelligence, like I was saying at first, it has developed in missions is something called as adaptive intelligence. So here we use our clinical decision-making capability with what we already know about artificial intelligence to deliver diagnostic uh, capabilities or diagnostic prowess to various kinds of MRIs or uh, what kind of equipments, whatever we use. So uh, now augmenting MR with adaptive intelligence. So I've just divided this into three just to show you what's uh, cooking. We do have uh, in Philips, we always differentiate it based on speed, comfort, and confidence. So here we have solutions where I'll be explaining to you in the forthcoming slides. So uh, this is some, something that has uh, been making huge strides in the, in the form of technical progress. So I'm talking about blue seal magnets here. So all of you are accustomed to working on an MRI with helium. So have you ever heard of an MRI that does not use helium or that doesn't need to be ramped up or that doesn't need to be quenched in the, in the usual way what you quench it? Or you, you are more, more than me, you know, the pain it takes to face your manager if you go and quench your magnet without knowing. So it's a nightmare, right? So Blue Seal is quite more than that, okay? So here you have power supply uh, management. So there's automatic switch to backup or ramp down depending on the power situation. So let's say you're working in a hilly place, you're working in Leh or you're working in Tibet. So there's no power there. Cooling management in the form of automatic switch to backup depending on the power situation. So if your power goes off, automatically the machine goes into a conservative mode where it doesn't, it already doesn't have helium and there's no way it can get quenched. And even if you do have an adverse situation where you have a patient who's stuck in the magnet and it... And why do you need this kind of a solution? So as you know, if you quench a magnet, there's a lot of downtime that's involved. The person has to come, the person has to fill the helium, and there's a lot of expense that's involved. So AI-based predictive maintenance is something else that can save your customer or save your management a whole lot of money. So if there is an adverse situation that is about to happen, or let's say there is a situation that would happen in another 10 days, wherein your machine might get stalled or your machine might get spoiled and there is going to be a downtime, the AI-based solution within the system automatically sends its signals or sends the results to the Philips personnel and they can come over even before and mend your machine so that you will not have to sit uh, without doing a scan and save a lot of downtime. Uh, this has been there for time immemorial with uh, our missions. This is something that relies on artificial intelligence as well. So uh, this is automatic planning in the form of smart exam. So here you can see that the mission itself learns and automates its MRI planning based on anatomical landmarks. It could save you a lot of time and energy. One technologist, two systems, Perfect, I can do a brain scan. So that's the kind of solution you have here. You could do this with a, a whole lot of other anatomies as well in the form of joints, breast, spine, just name the scan. So this is something that is happening with almost uh, every vendor, but nevertheless, it is artificial intelligence too. Uh, this is just a, another video to show you how the automated planning and scanning works. So as you see here, this is a shoulder scan. The survey has been taken, followed by which the technician can do his own reading or multitask. And as you see, the scans get planned and completed uh, in the way how it was supposed to be without your personal intervention. So this is yet another way of how AI is impacting radiology and MRI in particular. And this is Another way wherein you have automated post-processing. So the machine can automatically sense what scan you have been doing, and it can give you an automated post-processing in the form of a smart line step. 
So you do not have to manually go and do your mapping, or you don't have to manually go and do your uh, post-processing steps. Uh, perfect solution here, yet another uh, AI-induced solution in the form of Vital Eye. So we have been giving uh, a phenomenal solution to our customers in the form of Vital Eye, wherein you don't have to connect a respiratory belt to your patient anymore. So it is a very tedious process to put an obese patient and connect your respiratory trigger and do an abdominal scan. However, Vital Eye gives you the freedom of directly positioning the patient and continuing with your scan on the fly. So this gives you improved quality of physiology signal as well. Most of you are confused as to where you need to keep your respiratory trigger. And even if you do, your signal just doesn't seem to go up and down. There's a lot of signal capacity going on, and this might save you a whole lot of time. So you don't have to handle it. It is continuous in the presence of respiratory triggering, and it gives you perfect results. So as you see here, I'm showing you an MRCP scan with the normal respiratory belt and that which works with vital eye. So how does vital eye work? As you see in the photo, uh, this is basically how it works based on infrared signals. So the mission is emitting infrared signals to the area where the patient reads, and it's been using an AI algorithm to check the pixel intensity going up and down based on uh, the inspiration and expiration patterns of the patient. So it matches the best signals uh, and it takes the best curves rather than you reposition the patient. Illumio, yes, we do have a solution wherein your diagnostic radiologist might not get confused anymore. So let's say he has a CT scan, he has an MRI scan and he has a, a, an, an NM and all the modalities, he might be confused as to what exactly needs to be done in order for him to do the report. And how do I label this? How do I do this systematically? We do have a solution in the form of Illumio that pulls your data or you get the opportunity to push the data and it automatically segments your data into how you should report, when you should report and what you should report. It gives you solutions in the form of labeling. It gives you solutions as to pinpointing the area where you have a lesion. And even if you forget to do something, it tells you that you should have uh, labeled a particular lesion. It also lets you compare and inspect different modalities in the form of CT and MRI simultaneously. And it gives you automated findings in the form of a result tab. Uh, AI-based automatic cardiac segmentation. Most of you use MRI and are perfectly uh, perfect in your MRI uh, cardiac planning. However, when it comes to doing your post-processing, there's a lot of hiccups here. Why? Because you need to draw your ROIs in order to do a perfect ejaculation, uh, in order to do an ejection fraction calculation. So here, as you see, the, the, the curves and uh, the ROIs are automatically drawn. The system uses an AI-based technique to check for pixel intensity differences, and the contours are automatically detected and drawn based on AI again, and the quantification is automated. Coming over to undersampled imaging with AI. So how many of you have been listening to acceleration techniques? So uh, all the different vendors in the form of Siemens G and Philips are using CompressSense imaging. So we do have CompressSense, which is heavily undersampling your data and then recording and removing all the noise. There's a lot of physics involved, what I don't want to talk about. And then you get a smooth image in the form of a perfect diagnostic image after the reconstruction. So it, AI has been employed here again to remove the noise further so that you can severely undersample your data to get a very short uh, scan time image. Predictive maintenance. So previously I explained this to you just to give you uh, one more idea as to how it works. Live data from your MRI scanner or your cat lab equipment or your CT equipment is being analyzed by our AI software on the back end. And it takes into account all uh, the log files and everything that have been working. And it, it sends accordingly the data to the remote person or the application specialist or the project person or the concerned authority based on what exactly is the issue. So here you're going to save your a diagnostic center a lot of time in the way that you don't have to wait till the damage really happens. Automated protocol management. Yes, technicians, I don't know if you're going to be happy about this or not, but yes, 
suddenly I and you should all be happy because you don't have to be scared that your radiologist is going to come back and say, hey, why did you miss this sequence? So if your doctor is used to doing a particular set of sequences based on the abnormality or the indication, the system automatically tells and gives you all the protocols based on the clinical abnormality. And you finally have the opportunity to validate it and run the scan. So there's no way you will miss a sequence. Motion correction using neural networks. So I already spoke to you about the way how the human brain works. So they have tried to replicate a similar setup in uh, reduction of motion artifacts. You had multi-vein, you had all kinds of uh, you know, motion correction techniques in the form of propeller, and it's all becoming history. We have AI coming and taking over and saying, no, I don't want all this to work. I can still correct my motion based on my neural network or my sixth sense. Intellispace discovery. So this is yet another Philips solution. Of course, competitors might have something else as well. The Philips discovery helps you leverage your existing work by making your own AI algorithms. So if you want to do an automatic segmentation of a particular structure, and if you can sit down with your RSO or with your radiologist and sit and make that algorithm, you can certainly get automated results later. So here we have been doing phenomenal work in the field of oncology, neurology, cardiology, and vascular studies, as you see on the screen. Automated diagnostic support. So this is what comes to most of our minds when we hear of AI. Yes, you're absolutely right. We have systems that can detect the tumor, give you the volume of the tumor. If you have given a contrast agent, it can get you the volume of the tissue that has been enhanced, and it can give you a salvageable area or edema area after post-contrast or after post-surgery. It can give you all those things in an automated fashion. And this is a deep learning model, uh, which is very closely related to the neural network as well. So the outcome is that you get successful tissue segmentation uh, in the form of whole tumor segmentation, necrotic features, enhancing and non-enhancing components. So this will certainly impact the diagnosis because uh, most of us are confused as to whether it is really an enhancement or an edema or the debris. So this will help us in that manner. Coming over to uh, lesion support and multiple sclerosis. Multiple, what is multiple sclerosis? There's a whole lot of amyloid plaques that's coming into your brain. How do I keep track of all this? Oh my God, there's one today, there's one tomorrow. Maybe there's a two that's gone and a five that's come back. How do I keep track of this? Yes, AI can keep track of all these things. It can give you an idea as to what went off and what has come back. So if there is a new lesion, it will tell you it's a new one. If it's an old one, it will tell you it's gone. So you have a time-based calculation as to seeing what exactly is happening within your brain during your follow-up visits. So this again saves the clinician a whole lot of time rather than sitting and comparing it side by side. What is the future? So what is really cooking? As all of you rightly know and understand, AI is going to be taking the, the, the reins of the horse when it comes to medical imaging and it's going to ride us and let's all ride with AI together in, in perfect diagnosis. Driving towards a single patient view. So here we have something that is called a digital twin. Have you ever heard of a solution where you can have a virtual twin in the background and see as to what exactly is going to happen to your body, is going on with your body, or how you can mend it before the damage is already done? So this is an AI solution where in your genomic profile and your imaging studies, your family history, your clinical history, and all of that will be fed to the AI algorithm. And the AI algorithm automatically creates an individual virtually who is supposed to be your digital twin. So this digital twin will tell you as to how many days from now, or how many weeks from now, or what is expected in your body to ha happen. If you don't control your cholesterol, you're going to have such and such thing in the next two years. So you have a digital twin in the background who will always guide you and get you the perfect diagnosis beforehand or who will tell you. So the more data you give to the algorithm, the better. If you have an MRI scan, you can load that. If you have a CT scan, you can load that. Your ECG, your respiratory rate, everything. So this reminds me of my Apple, uh, my Apple uh, Watch. It, it has a whole lot of features into it, which tells me that I should go to sleep or I've exceeded 
my capacity tonight and I should really take some rest. I've been working all day. So this is the kind of digital twin that can exist virtually on your phones telling you that you should live your life like this or probably you should go to the doctor in the next five days. So this is again phenomenal uh, research that's going on. Now, uh, I think I've reached the end of my slides. I had a lot of hiccups talking to all of you. I hope it reached all of you, at least to take away five or six AI-based features, what you're looking at in the next two to three years. Happy AIing to everybody. Enjoy technology and keep learning.